Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, and today it is a top secret mission. In fact, I hope that you have on your ninja gear. We're going to drop in and infiltrate. Go inside the secret world of debt consolidation via debt settlement. Are you ready for this? You may have recently experienced a financial hardship, and maybe you're wondering what debt consolidation option you should consider. Before bankruptcy, there are two main debt consolidation options to consider. The first is a debt consolidation loan. This is often for those who still have a good credit score and debt-to-income ratio. Now, the second is debt consolidation via debt settlement which is what we're going to cover today. Traditionally, debt settlement has had many companies that have been unscrupulous. In fact, CFPB has deemed that dealing with debt settlement companies can be risky. Does that mean that all debt settlement companies are risky? The purpose of today's podcast is just to show you the following. How debt settlement works, understand the debt settlement process, your actual debt settlement results, downsides of debt settlement, and common scams and red flags of debt settlement companies, and then a conclusion about debt settlement. Let's dive right into the meat of this, shall we? So here's how debt settlement works. Because there are negative side effects of debt settlement, you might want to consider all of your credit card debt relief options before pursuing debt settlement. If you haven't already, you may also want to put together a budget to see whether there are expenses that can also be reduced to avoid debt relief altogether. Debt settlement, also known as debt consolidation via debt settlement, is the process of negotiating your debts for a lesser amount. It's not to be mistaken for debt management, which is the process where a company would try to negotiate lesser interest rates. Understanding the debt settlement process. So when you enroll in a debt settlement program, the debt settlement company will work as the intermediary between the individual and the creditor. Here's the general process of how it works. You will create an enrollee-owned escrow bank account where all of your funds are added. This bank account is yours, but you can give them access to settle accounts with your permission. You have the right to agree or decline a settlement offer. You then send one or two draft amounts to this bank account each month instead of that money going to your creditors. The debt settlement will act as the primary contact between the creditors and you. Once funds accrue, the debt settlement company will generally begin negotiating with each creditor. The debt settlement company will negotiate with the creditor based on financial hardship. When a settlement is tentative, you will have the opportunity to accept or reject the debt settlement plan. There are structured plans over up to 24 months to one-time payments. Creditors may provide better rates for one-time payments because the creditors prefer money in the door. You will go through the same process with the debt settlement company until all of the debts have been negotiated and settled. Once all of your debt is paid, you will graduate from the program and should be debt-free. Your actual debt settlement results. So, before you join a debt settlement program, you should have correct expectations of how much it will cost you and how much you can save. The savings can be significant, but it's also possible that you won't save a fortune. Understanding the costs. Okay, so there are two ways that a debt settlement generally charges for its program. One, percentage of enrolled debt. Two, percentage of savings. The most common is a percentage of the enrolled debt. A debt settlement program that charges a percentage of savings may look for those individuals who have equity in other assets that will allow them to lump sum all of the settlements. The fee for the percentage of enrolled debt programs often ranges from 15 to 25 percent. In addition, you will often be charged an escrow account fee of 12 to 15 dollars a month. You will also often have the option to get legal coverage in case of a lawsuit that ranges from $10 to $50 per month. This is optional. A debt settlement program should negotiate on debt with a lawsuit 
So you may consider that before you get the optional legal coverage. In short, you should not need a lawyer to negotiate on debt with a lawsuit, but if you do, you generally would pay in the range between $175 to $300 per hour in legal fees. Rather than go through some numbers and take a look at a couple of scenarios, there are some really cool graphs you can check out. A breakdown of an estimated debt settlement program and what it might look like. You can see it at thecollegeinvestor.com. If you just search for Inside the Secret World of Debt Consolidation, you'll find it. All right, so you might still save some money when comparing your current monthly payments to the estimates that you can see in the graph. It just might be less than originally anticipated. Also, there might be some legal groups that I've seen charge up to 35% of enrolled debt with additional fees. In that scenario, you might want to estimate how much you'll be paying to see whether you save anything at all. So, let's move on and see the granular on a specific example. Many debt settlement companies will quote a 50% debt reduction, but it may fail to mention the fees that you will be paying for its services. Oops, did we forget to mention that? All right, anyway, to illustrate this point, let's say you have $20,000 in debt and the debt settlement company negotiates for $10,000 over 36 months. The debt settlement company charges 25% of the debt enrolled as a fee. You also have to pay a $12.50 escrow account maintenance fee per month. Let's also say you're not tax insolvent, as defined by the IRS. Assuming a 25% income bracket, you only saved $2,050. $20,000 in debt, minus $10,000 is what the debt settlement negotiation was, minus $5,000, minus $2,500, 25% of forgiven debt, minus $450. This may still be a better scenario than the alternative, but projecting your actual results can be helpful before you join a program to compare to other debt relief options. Okay, here are some of the downsides of debt settlement. Tax considerations. We covered the tax considerations in the previous section, but this is an important thing to consider before pursuing debt settlement. If you are tax solvent, then you might receive a 1099-C from the IRS for the forgiven debt. The creditor may submit these canceled debt savings to the IRS when the amount is forgiven is greater than 600 bucks. Now, you might still save money with debt settlement, but this is an important thing to consider. Do you always have to pay taxes on forgiven debt? Not necessarily. If you are tax insolvent, as defined by the IRS, you may not have to pay taxes on forgiven debt. But this is a better question for a tax advisor, for sure. Credit score implications. Man, yeah. the credit score may undoubtedly take a tumble. How much, you might ask? It often depends on your starting point. The best way to answer this question may be to discuss the research that has been done covering debt settlement credit score impact that highlights using my FICO's free credit score estimator to estimate an approximate score drop based on your details. Really cool tool. When debt is settled, you may receive a paid in full for less than the full balance instead of a charged off so this may have positive implications. That said, it's always better from a credit report perspective to get the debt paid in the full mark. I hope that makes sense. Lawsuit likelihood. There are, uh, the chances of a lawsuit, probably one of the most important factors to consider before pursuing debt settlement. But it's often not spoken about before starting the program. Yes, debt settlement may be a good option, but you should also consider the chances that you will be sued by a creditor for unpaid debt. Hmm. Which begs the question, how do you know which creditor will sue? It can be hard to know before you enter a debt settlement program. The best tool that I have found, Ascend's free debt settlement calculator. Ascend, A-S-C-E-N-D, debt settlement calculator. It estimates the lawsuit likelihood by your creditors, highlights the fees, pros, and cons, and gives more information about debt settlement. It's free, by the way, in case I forgot to mention that. Knowing whether your creditors will sue is really important to consider. For example, let's say you have 10 creditors you are looking to enroll in a debt settlement program. 
if one of the ten has a high likelihood of a lawsuit, then it may be okay to enroll in a program as the debt settlement company should prioritize that debt. If nine out of ten creditors have a high likelihood of a lawsuit, you may want to consider a different debt relief option. What happens when a creditor sues? A debt settlement program will generally still be able to negotiate with a creditor even after a lawsuit, although the percentages are often higher, so the savings might be less. Some debt settlement programs may offer a legal assistance option if you are sued, but you might want to ask how they would handle a lawsuit to see whether you actually need it, as it can be very expensive over the life of the debt settlement program. Take a look at some common scams, maybe some red flags you need to look for with debt settlement companies. Wow, there are a ton of common red flags and scams to consider before pursuing debt consolidation via debt settlement. Let's go through the list of scams and red flags. 1. Amazing reviews only on biased review sites. So when you search for debt settlement, you may find biased and unbiased review sites. Common unbiased review sites may be Google, because Google doesn't profit based on the reviews. Review sites that are ads on Google may be more likely to be biased. The reason is that debt settlement companies may pay these review sites to rank. You may want to do your due diligence across multiple review sites before choosing a program. Number two, it doesn't do a full analysis of your options. There are other options to debt settlement, such as debt management or even bankruptcy. Some debt settlement salesmen won't clearly define the pros and cons of each of the options and pitch debt settlement as the only option. You may not want to join a debt settlement program if you should be considering bankruptcy. Three, has pushy sales tactics. Choosing a debt relief option should be an endeavor where you weigh all of the different costs and pros and cons of each of the debt relief options. A pushy salesperson may not be considering your best interests to consider all of your options. Four, charges upfront fees. Many, many moons ago, debt settlement companies would charge large upfront fees before ever settling debts. These companies would take advantage of people by charging fees and never settling a debt. Thankfully, Dodd-Frank put restrictions on upfront fees. Most debt companies will only charge the program fee after a debt is settled. That said, you might want to make sure that whichever company you're choosing follows such fee guidelines. Here's another one. Promotes debt settlement as a debt consolidation loan. You might receive a letter in the mail that states that you may be eligible for a debt consolidation loan or a consolidation. Thinking it's a debt consolidation loan, you may apply on the website, only to find out later that it was a debt settlement company disguising as a debt consolidation loan company to get you to enter its program. Oh. Here's one. Mentions positive outcomes only. <laughs> you may be weary if the debt settlement representative only mentions positive outcomes. For example, negative outcomes include lawsuits for unpaid debt and taxes on the forgiven debt. You may want to consider a debt settlement company that is honest about the pros and cons. Unclear about potential actual savings. Ugh. As mentioned before, a debt settlement program may pitch a 50% savings on your debt, but the salesman may forget to mention the costs and fees that you will have to pay to resolve the debt. As such, you may want to estimate your actual savings before enrolling in the program. Pushing enrollment despite high likelihood of lawsuits. There are some creditors that just have a high likelihood of suing than other creditors. When you have 10 creditors, a debt settlement company should know the lawsuit likelihood of each of your creditors based on previous data. There are a number of companies that are legitimate, but you do need to do your due diligence before pursuing debt settlement. Debt settlement conclusion. So pursuing debt settlement may be a good option for you, but it's important to understand all of the pros and cons before making that decision. When you're considering an actual firm, 
It might also be good to check with your state's attorney general and consumer protection office to see whether the company you are considering has outstanding complaints. And finally, before deciding on a debt settlement, it's helpful to know all of your options. You may be able to get out of debt without debt relief using such means as a budget or a debt payoff planner app. But whatever you decide, hopefully, today's podcast has informed you on how debt settlement works and whether it will work for you. Thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by today. And again, you can see this article at thecollegeinvestor.com, all kinds of links and resources as well. Just type in the search bar inside the secret world of debt consolidation and you'll find it. Thanks again. Have an awesome day. We'll talk to you again soon.